All right, hello, and welcome back to my RTS tutorial in Unity. Today, we're going to be working on more actions for the game. Uh, this time, we're going to have sort of like a basic unit interaction. So we're doing basically combat. So if I press play here, uh, so we select the hoplite and say right click on one of these workers. We can see that he dies, uh, so kill a couple of them. And if we do select, only the hot light moves because they're dead, we can't select them anymore. Whereas if we do this to so the live ones, we can move them and stuff. So yeah. Uh, I know we're getting these argument out of range exceptions because of the queue, but whatever. I don't know where they're going, actually. Oh, I gathered a resource, that's why. So yeah, and we could do that to the archer as well. I don't think. Oh, never mind. Yeah, uh, so I will show you how this works. Okay, so first off, we've got a few basic scripts that we'll probably expand upon in later episodes just to sort of give us a start for combat between units. So first off, we've got a unit attack. We have public floats for attack damage, attack range, and attack rate. Uh, and an attack type, which is basically just an e that we set, so either melee or ranged. And we have a public void that's attack and a target. Uh, and basically all this does, for now, as anyway, is we get passed in a, an object, so presumably the uh, unit you right-clicked on, and that will basically just deal the attack damage to that unit's unit health script. And yeah. This will be expanded upon, like when we do proper combat and AI and all sorts of stuff, but for now it's just so we can show that we can get units to interact and stuff. Uh, second is a unit health script. Basically we have a float for health and a boolean for whether they're dead or not. And what we do is we have a... we don't even need these, so we can get rid of them. Uh, we have a deal damage method, which basically pass in a float and it deals it takes that value from the health, and then we call the death check method, which basically is checking if we are if we're dead or not. So if the health is less than or equal to zero, then we are dead. So we call die, which basically just disables the collider, unit mass class, and unit attack. So we can't really do anything. Should probably disable unit movement too as well. Actually, just want to think about it. Uh, this okay components units movement. No, movement. Yeah, there. Dot enabled equals false. Yeah, because we don't want units to keep moving after they've died, which would be weird. It's not the walking dead here. Uh, so yeah, basically we disable all the components that we don't need. We do keep the... Uh, uh, for now I'm going to keep the uh, unit health script activated so we can tell if the unit is dead or not. And then we just like rotate the uh, uh, set the rotation to zero zero ninety to make it look like they're falling over, and that's pretty much it. Goodbye. Uh, yeah. Uh, these are kept in a new two new uh, variables in the unit mass class. So every unit should have those two scripts for unit attack and unit health. Uh, basically, that's just so we can reference them. Uh, we get them on the wake, so it'll do it automatically. You don't need to Sam. Uh, they're just public, so when we're using action attack unit, we can call them. Okay, uh, now for uh, the actual action. Oh, sorry, uh, changes to unit order scripts because we added the uh, way to select attacking units. Oh, attack units, sorry. So basically, uh, we got. One change we made here was I made increase the scope of a hit object. So basically before, uh, I would only have hit objects as a game object would only exist within this try statement. So once it had got the tag out off the object, it wouldn't matter. So it would, uh, it would just be a loss to us. But since, uh, since uh, we'll like have to, uh, what's the word? Uh, basically, if we're not like right next to that uh, the enemy that we've right clicked on with the unit, we're gonna want to go get a path to him. 
so to do that, we will need to have a reference to the object uh, to initialize the attack unit. So that is why we've increased the scope. So uh, hit object will now exist until after this if statement has been executed. So checking if it's a resource or a unit or otherwise we just move there and then it gets lost here because we don't need it anymore. So yeah, I hope that explanation of scope makes sense. So yeah. So if we've right clicked on an object and it's got the tag unit, uh, we get the mouse position and one mouse in world. We get the tile we are on or the mouse we click we're on, sorry. Uh, for each of the units we got selected, we get the unit master class and we have the component attack unit because we're attacking a unit. And basically we're checking if we can perform, if this unit can attack the uh, object. So, uh, did I keep the hoplite script open? No. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, so we've added a attack unit uh, variable, not variable, uh, condition to the can we perform action for the hoplite. So since we can do that, we're going to initialize the target because that was one of the methods well, virtual methods we had in the unit master class, I think. No, where do we have that? And what does that inherit from? Uh, hop light, unit master class, unit master class. Should do. Oh, because I don't know. Oh, well. Oh, no, it's action. Sorry, I'm thinking of action. Uh, yeah, action has that, not unit master class. So, because. We're initializing the action and then adding this, uh, adding the action to the unit mask class. Sorry, my bad. Uh, so basically, we're just initializing that. So, oh shit, sorry. So we initialize the action with the enemy we want to attack. We've got, uh, basically, uh, then we add it to the queue. Sorry. And then we disable it so it's only enabled again when it's called in the actions queue for the first time. And yeah, and if we can't do it, we destroy it and we move the unit to the location where we clicked. And we needed to check that the game object was not null, so that's why we had to increase the scope of the hit object just so we can do that and initialize it if it's not null. Right. Sorry. And now we get on to the new script we did, or the main new script for attacking uh, the uh, enemy or person. So, uh, basically, we got a public game object, that's the target, that's just initialized. Uh, again, this is going to be a multi-part action like the gather resource. So it's going to loop till it's true. Uh, it's got a loop and we've got the multi-part action the setting to true here. So we need to loop until it's done. Uh, we've got two values here. We got a path refresh timer, which is basically a counter uh, that counts down to zero. And then once it hits zero, it'll get a new path to the target because if the enemies are moving then we want to get that and basically and the path refresh reset is basically the value it gets reset to once it reaches zero and you've got a new path uh you can sort of play with that because it's like the lower you have the value the more smoothly the path will be but uh it's an increased performance cost so you want to find uh, like a nice medium between the two. Uh, public float range, I believe, is just a local store for the uh, what's the word? The attack range. That's one because we use that when determining how far away we need to be from the target to attack, and how far. If we're further than that, we just uh, continue moving towards it. Um, public float distance is just a what it is. It's basically just me displaying how far away we are from the target. It's not like an actual variable that we use properly. It's just uh, enabled here with vector two to distance between my position and the target position. 
which we should get the X and Ys for that. That's all good. Uh, yeah. So first off, we're using initialize target instead of uh, initialize location, which we use, which uh, if I open up action, uh, uh, action. Uh, yeah, so instead of initialize location, we are using initialize target this time. So if we find that back again. So we're just passing in, this is passed in from the uh, unit order script, the game object we want to attack. So in that case, we'll just get a, a unit that's passed in. And if it's, but first off, we have to check, is it a valid target? So say if you had right clicked on one of your own units or a building or something for some reason, I don't know, and you'd want to check. So we check like, say if we, once we've implemented multiple factions or whatever, or enemies will come back to this, but for now we just always return true. But we could return false, say, if we would clicked on one of our own units or the unit was dead or whatever, you know, just stuff like that to take into consideration. Uh, then we set the target to G, the game object we passed in, set it to a multi-part action, and we set me, which is basically just a reference to the unit master class on the unit that's performing the action. And then the range is just set to the my attack dot attack range, which is just grabbed from the unit mass class, which we put in, which is all good. Uh, otherwise, so if say this isn't a uh, valid target, then we set looping to false. So it's saying, all right, since we don't want to actually attack this target, we're going to set false, and this will just make it go to the next action in the queue. This might not be the best way to do this now that I'm thinking about it. So maybe having some kind of uh, authentication in this bit here. So if we are looping, if like we don't want to do that, so I might move it to here at some point, but not for now. It works this way, but it might not be the best way. So yeah. Uh, now we've got our do action. Uh, you can just ignore this section of code for now. It doesn't actually do anything vital to the script. It just displays the distance between the unit and the target it's trying to attack. So basically we check if we are near the target, or sorry, if we are not near the target, we follow it. If we are near the target, we attack the target and we are checking to see if the target is dead. So first off, the uh, Near target basically uses two vector twos. We convert our position, which is a vector three, and the target position, which is also a vector three, to a vector two by just grabbing the x and y's. Then we use vector two dot distance to work out if we are within the attack range of an object. So if I look at the uh, hoplites, then we can see the attack range is two. So like we can shiv them with a pike or something. And say if you had an archer, that might be ten because they can fire a bow at them or whatever. Or a peasant maybe might have like one distance or something. I don't know. That's the kind of idea I was going for. So if we are within the attack range of the unit, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. And yeah. Uh, so target follow. So since we aren't near the enemy that we wanted to attack, we will call target follow. And target follow basically counts down the path refresh timer. And if the path refresh timer gets less than or equal to zero, then we call the move to location of the target to transform to position. So this line gets a new path. And then we reset the timer to the path reset rally. And yeah, so that'll then start the countdown again. And once it reaches less than or equal to zero, get into a path and that loops until we are near the enemy. In which case, Uh, we once we are near the enemy, we call the attack method in the unit attack. So we pass in the target game object and it just deals the damage. And then we set the attack timer to be the attack rate. So we'll have to wait that long again. So I think on the hot flight, it's one second. 
just for now. Yeah, one second. So we can only attack once per second with the hoplite. Uh, and so the since the attack timer will be more than one, it counts down to zero. And then if it's not more than zero, it attacks. That simple. Um, we've got a target dead monitor. So if this is why we didn't disable unit health when the enemy dies, so it's not in there. Uh, so we can use it in the attack unit. Uh, attack unit action. So we check if the target is dead, we set loop to false. So that all basically means because we returned the inverse of loop in get action is complete, then that means, all right, we're done because we're not wanting to loop anymore. So it's returning true if loop is false. And yeah, well, that makes sense. And get action type. Uh, if we just return an attack unit, remember to make sure that attack unit the type is the same as yeah, there. They have to be the same, otherwise it won't work and you won't be able to attack units, which is bad. So yeah. Okay, so this is final products again. I'll just show you quickly. So if we select the hoplite and right click on these uh, peasants, it'll just go around and kill them. And then we can just like right click between random and they can walk around. Uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. I think next time I'm going to start working on the, actually being able to build stuff because I know I did something like that uh, with, what was it? Uh, the uh, tile based tutorial when it wasn't actually a thingy, but I'd like to revisit that because there's some alterations I would like to make. Uh, yeah. Because uh, there is, uh, yeah. But I'm probably going to do buildings next time. For that, uh, what else I want to Oh, yeah, I put out a Moga station. Um, sorry, a Moga out. Omega station, which is basically uh, a vertical slice of a sort of procedurally generated roguelike that I had to build for my final year university project, which I'm quite proud of actually. I may come back to it in the future, but for now it's more or less done. I would like to re go over the generation, but if you've not already watched the video on it, because there was a video out on it and it's done quite well, like 400 odd views. So yeah. I'm happy with that. Uh, yeah, what else? Stuff still up on itch.io. Oh, Omega Station is. That's free. So go download that. Have fun. Got any advice, requests, comments, etc. Put them down in the comment section. Go download and play my shit. Cheers and goodbye.